adoption of electric vehicles and heat pumps, etc., means that the consumption per home is going to more than double. While it, is, it, it was a 20th century marvel, not evolved in the last 120 years. Tell me a technology in our lives that have not evolved in, in the last 20 years. The, the, the government is also incentivizing people to adopt these technologies that, that give them more control over their lives, that actually allows them to withdraw a bit of their dependence on this sort of old, centralized, monopolistic utility system that we have. Let me start with an articulation of a thought that crosses my mind occasionally, right? If Thomas Edison, Nikola Tesla, or Westinghouse were walking down the street of any town USA or Fremont, California, and they looked up at the energy infrastructure, they would recognize all elements of it. They would recognize those transmission lines, the, the substation, the distribution infrastructure, the transformers, the service entrance, the main panel, they would recognize all parts of it. I joke, hey, Edison probably worked on that round glass meter at GE, right? How can a technology, while it, is, it, it was a 20th century marvel, not evolve in the last 120 years? Tell me a technology in our lives that have not evolved in, in the last 20 years. We should see massive change in the energy infrastructure, in the energy landscape, uh, more change than even what we have seen in the last 10 years, which has been quite tremendous. We're gonna see even more change coming in the future. And if, uh, if we are on the right side of history, the change technology history, it means that this infrastructure will evolve into something that's fully decentralized or distributed, which means that the end point here in this case is that home. That home's gonna become really much more intelligent, it's going to make autonomous decisions, and the homeowner is gonna have unprecedented level of control and autonomy on their energy system, right? There are a number of things that are driving that change. And that, you know, that change and moving the, the whole infrastructure from something that's centralized to decentralized to a distributed infrastructure where the home, on, home is the unit of intelligence is where Enphase really plays a major role. And that evolution, that change is very exciting. And I think you're going to see even more change in the next 20, 30 years uh, than what we have seen even in the last 10 years. This whole energy infrastructure is going to change massively. It's not going to look anything like what it even looks today. And being in the midst of that change is always exciting, particularly for an, for an entrepreneur. We're always thinking about, oh, here's the next cool idea, and the next cool idea, and the next cool thing that we can do to, um, uh, to affect and influence that change and actually participate in it. Yeah, no, it, it's, it's very exciting. It's very exciting. And, and it, this is the thing that really drew me to solar was, was that this was a technology that gave me more control over my life, particularly in my, my energy situation. But that's a big part of our lives. Our, our lives, modern lives are very energy dependent. Yep. And um, I, think it was, I think it was Bill Gates who, who once said that, you know, people will always embrace technology that gives them more control over their lives. And at the time, I believe he was talking about why, why personal computers were going to catch on. And he was right about that. If I've got that quote correct, he was right about that. But I see solar as another one of those technologies, mm -hmm. similar to smartphones and social media, but it gives us more control over our lives. Mm -hmm. And so I'm naturally drawn to that. Um, I also think it's one of the, one of the rare cases where the, the, the government is also incentivizing people to adopt these technologies that, that give them more control over their lives, that actually allows them to withdraw a bit of their dependence on this sort of old, centralized, monopolistic utility system that we have. All right, I hope you're getting some great value from today's video content. If you're a solar sales professional out there, or maybe you're considering starting a career in solar sales coming in from another industry, then I'd like to invite you to Solar Surge University. Solar Surge University is the premier online training program for aspiring solar sales professionals who, who really want to be professionals. Learn how to sell solar at an expert level with a consultative approach 
It's the same approach that I use and that we use here at Solar Surge to do over $700,000 a month in solar sales virtually with no advertising budget. So if you'd like to separate yourself from the pack of undereducated, underperforming solar salespeople, check out Solar Surge University, where you can learn all of our expert techniques and for a limited time, have access to my live sales call recordings with some of my live clients. So again, we invite you to check out Solar Surge University. The link will be below here. And we're also offering a 14 day, no risk money back guarantee. And uh, at least for me, that's, that's my main motivator to this. So, so, so what does this look like? If we can kind of paint a picture for people five years from now, 10 years from now, how does the electrified home look different than what we have today? It looks very, very different. And you know, this is the, uh, the need of the hour. It's not that it's a nice change or just technology softly evolving into something like a distributed smart home. Um, we, we, we are living in unprecedented times. I mean, climate change for, for some of us, we really believe in it. We, and for me, it's very personal. I really need to make sure that I leave the planet to my 13-year-old my, 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 my daughter in a place better than what, you know, what, uh, how we inherited it. And I think we can, right? Um, so the, the confluence of changes are there is peop the people want to control their own energy. They want to be in control of their own destiny, right? Dependency on, on, on foreign kilowatt hours, right? Foreign energy. We want to get away from that, right? We want to be able to um, control our own destiny in that sense. Um, we know the impact of climate change, right? That is substantial. Um, we also recognize that due to some of these changes, you're starting to see something that is really hitting your wallet. Cost of electricity is going up tremendously. Uh, the grid is becoming less reliable due to you know, weather-related issues primarily. Um, right? We are seeing in California things such as wildfires, et cetera. And so all of those things are driving big change. And to be very specific, what we are seeing is that the homes are getting electrified. So what that means is that the, the biggest electrification that's taking place in the home is cars are becoming EV, now being, becoming electric, right? So people, instead of having a gas-powered car, a gasoline-powered car, are now looking at electric vehicles. EV adoption is growing at a tremendous rate, and it's not one EV. People are buying two EVs. Uh, people are looking at uh, you know, their, their gas-powered water heater and saying, hey, I should go electric on the, on the gas-powered water heater. Uh, your air conditioning and heating, right? That's people are moving to heat pumps. Adoption of solar and heat pumps, et cetera, means that, sorry, uh, uh, adoption of electric vehicles and heat pumps, et cetera, means that the consumption per home is going to more than double. So an average home in the U.S. consumes about 30 kilowatt hours of energy per day, right? If you, an electric vehicle and a typical commute is going to be another 12 to 15 kilowatt hours a day per car. Right there, you've got another 25 to 30 kilowatt hours per day. Add a heat pump, that's another 10 to 12 kilowatt hours. You have more than doubled the energy demand. The second problem is that energy demand is not uniform through the day. It's very peaky, right? It may happen in the morning, then we all go to work, and the kids, ducker. the ducker, right? You see it again, becomes very peaky in the evening, right? Um, so how do you service this change? This change is massive. It's coming very quickly. How do you do it? If you go back and think about first principles, you know, you can go out there and rip out that entire distribution infrastructure. It's going to cost, you know, trillions of dollars to do. It's going to be very disruptive. It's really not practical. If you really think about it, renewables, solar, batteries, load management, are really the only way to achieve that. If I can produce my own energy, if I can store my energy to use it at the appropriate time, if I'm smart about how my car charges, I can really solve that big significant problem that we were talking about. Car, and, and that evolution into this energy system, now it's not just, hey, I put solar on my roof, I got solar, I got batteries, I got EVs, I need to be smart about when I charge my EV, I need to be smart about when I run my air conditioner, heater, et cetera. 
requires a very sophisticated software system in order to federate power flow on an instantaneous basis and an ongoing basis in order to deliver whatever the homeowner chooses, right? This is about homeowner choice. The homeowner may choose pure economics. Give me the best economics possible. I'll make certain decisions based on the best economics for the homeowner. Some home, another homeowner may choose, I'm willing to compromise a little bit on my economics, but I want to be completely carbon neutral, right? That means I never want to charge. And as an example, never want to charge my car from the grid because I don't believe the grid is green. Mm -hmm. Whereas I want to use my own solar and either directly to charge my car or use my solar from my battery <laughs> to, charge my, to charge my car. So all of those things are possible with a really sophisticated home energy management system that takes all of these disparate elements, your solar, your batteries, your EVs, your heat pumps, and also manage the grid. Because there may be times when it may make sense for me to buy from the grid. Sure. There may be other times when it may make sense for me to export to the grid, right? Mm -hmm. Takes all of these things into account. This is what I mean by turning that home, which was purely just a consumer into, of energy, to something much, much more sophisticated. Because think about it, I may ha this is a problem of abundance. We talked about it earlier on. Mm -hmm. I have plenty of sun. This is not a problem of shortage, right? We have plenty of sun. And I may choose at some point to export my energy, transact my energy, sell my energy to the grid, right? So those are all really intelligent economic decisions that the software algorithms have to make to make their home really, really intelligent, and that's where we are going. <laughs>